I think Greensboro, North Carolina, in 1979, in, in the year 2000, has one of the best police forces of any medium-sized city in America. When the Klan and Nazis arrived, there wasn't a single police anywhere to be found. We heard on, on the radio that the convoy was getting closer. So at that point, we knew how close they were. They just around the corner from us. So we decided to go down to the church where we knew they'd be coming by off every street and see what they looked like in their hoods. Talking about the Klan. When the caravan first came through, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on until I, like, until about three cars or four cars down, and I saw a Confederate sign, and I just associated that with clans, and I associated clans with trouble, you know, being that I had been in the stuff with my mother before. There were some exchanges of words between people in those cars uh, and people who were uh, assembling for the march. And that's when I started sensing real danger because I was in the street with Aya, we were in the street. A fire, shot was fired out of one of the lead vehicles uh, driven by Edward Dawson, who was under the pay at that time of the Greensboro Police Department and was one of their informants. Um, and uh, once that shot was fired, uh, a certain level of panic set in that people uh, tended to move away from the shot, to run away from it, frankly. Uh, there was a brawl. People jumped out of Klan and Nazi cars with sticks and knives. And I started backing up, and when I backed up, when I got to the curb, that's when the shooting started. And, uh, it, was just, it was a scary time. We were very scared. Didn't quite understand what was going on or why. We did know that it was a very dangerous situation. Um, our parents instructed us to run. That quickly ceased, and when it did, uh, one of the cars, I'm not sure the number, but near the end of the march, was completely stopped. All the individuals uh, were outside of it, opened the trunk, took out ammunition, guns, load them, carefully aim with a cigarette dangling out of their mouth, shooting at people. It certainly does not look like somebody's shooting back at them, and they took people off. Just before we got there, we heard shots have been fired. So we started looking out for a car coming by and they mentioned about a van. We saw several cars coming out of every street and finally we saw a van coming out of every street. Going real slow. I saw a guy running, a white male running to get inside the van. When he did, I jumped out of the, the van and stood behind a brick column with the church there. As the van approached me, I stepped around the corner with a shotgun and hollered the driver to freeze, please. The driver looked at me and didn't know what to do. I could tell there's other people in the van because the van was shaking. At that point, the driver started to continue forward and my partner jumped in the vehicle and blocked the street. At that time, we could not get on the radio to tell communications that we had the van stopped because there's so much controversy on the radio. Uh, at that time, we still, did not what it, we still did not know what had happened, just 75 yards away. Killed five people, uh, four died on the spot, and one died a day or so later and wounded nine others and terrorized that community. We knocked on doors. People were scared. They didn't let us in. We knocked and knocked and knocked. They were shutting doors in our face. And finally a lady had opened the door. We got inside the house. I remember sitting in the house beside I on the couch. All the children, we dispersed, but somehow ended up in the same apartment. She may have been the only person letting us in, I don't know. Finally, I switched to another frequency and called communications and told them we had the van and several people in custody. And finally, help come, and finally other officers come down to help us. Five people were shot and killed. Uh, I knew then uh, that this could not be accidental, and I said so. It is the Melbourne! It is the Council of Class! And so we declare war against them! War! Our people lay down on the ground! Because these dogs, these pigs, these representatives of the imperialists! Don't be war! 
It's gonna be war. It's gonna be war. Say I'm not done. 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 And uh, as I raise my voice uh, on this occasion, having been stabbed myself, um, the police came uh, and insisted that I stop talking, and I refused to do it. Uh, they then placed me under arrest. <laughs> threw me to the ground and uh, drug me bleeding under a fence. And when several people attempted to prevent them from doing that, they were arrested as well.